In such a bad and serious health crisis, why is it that there is so little information about it? If 20 to 25 percent of the Zambian population are carriers of the sickle cell trait, why is it that there are no programs that are deliberately aimed towards raising awareness? Why aren't there flyers? radio programs, TV shows that teach people about sickle cell disease. My name is Kawe, and I am a sickle cell patient. Sickle cell disease, it is a blood disorder that affects the shape of the red blood cells. This disease has the ability of changing the, 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 the shape of well-rounded blood cells that give life to human beings into rigid and sharp sea cord that can cause tremendous pain that cannot be explained. Sickle cell disease is a genetic disorder that is inherited from one parent, from two parents to their child. A child who has sickle cell disease when both the parents have the sickle cell trait. However, the reality of living with sickle cell is so much different. The reality of living with sickle cell disease is in so many ways cannot be explained in ways that can be understood. Because the reality of sickle cell is waking up early in the morning and not knowing how your day will end. The reality of sickle cell it is waking up in the morning and not knowing that later in the day you are going to be sick. It is waking up in the morning and not knowing that you may not live to see the end of the day. The reality of sickle cell disease, it is to live your own life as an experiment. I was born in a family of three and we all had sickle cell disease. My young brother died when he was young, and my elder sister died as an adult. My parents knew so little about sickle cell disease, just like so many parents out there. When, when, when parents have children that have sickle cell, they are told your child may not live to see old age. Your child may not live to become a productive member of society. They are told your child might die at a hairy age. You know, to live with sickle cell disease is to live under so many myths. Myths that have the power to change the way you perceive life as a patient. Myths such as sickle cell disease is a case. So many people have lived their lives believing they have been cursed. Myths such as sickle cell patients cannot have children. Sickle cell patients cannot live for long. Sickle cell patients are lazy. To live with sickle cell disease is to live in hiding. Hiding your identity because of the stigma that is ascribed with sickle cell disease. You are called by different names. You are called lazy. You are called an attention seeker. You are called a drug addict. And the sad thing is that some of this stigma does not only come from people who are ignorant about sickle cell disease, but it comes from people that are well-trained caregivers. They see you go in sick one week, and then they see you another week, and the following week, and they begin to think you are just seeking for attention. You know, to live with sickle cell disease, it is to live your life 
not knowing how your next five years will be like. Because people anticipate you to die early, and because you do not know what tomorrow holds for you, you are constantly anxious and afraid of making long-term goals and plans about your life. To live with sickle cell is to live under the financial stress of buying expensive medications. Medications that can cost you a minimum of 350 every month. Now imagine a family that is living up north in Wapla province or in northern province. A family that can barely raise a 350 quarter for their child. However, I believe this is a narrative that needs to change. I believe there should be a difference in how sickle cell is talked about. For many days, sickle cell disease or advocacy about sickle cell disease has been left in the hands of a very few non-governmental organizations. And these non-governmental organizations are the only people that make deliberate decisions to talk about sickle cell disease. And they show up once every year or twice every year and disappear only to come again the following year. These few moments of awareness that do not make a great impact to give the information that is so needed for a disease as serious as sickle cell disease. However, I believe there is a paradigm shift. There is a paradigm shift in how uh, companies are run, are run, how governments are run, how health institutions are run. And I believe there should be a paradigm shift in how we advocate for sickle cell disease. I believe the future of sickle cell disease has to change, and it has to change in three ways. Number one, I believe the future of sickle cell disease advocacy has to be inclusive. I believe it has to be empowering. I believe it has to be holistic. Inclusive. I believe it will take the efforts of both parents, patients, communities, the ministries and the government to change the narrative of sickle cell disease. I believe it will take you and I to make deliberate decisions, deliberate programs to talk about a disease that affects one to two percent of children that are born in Zambia. Secondly, I believe the future of advocacy for sickle cell disease has to be empowering. For so many years, advocacy in the sickle cell space has been about robbing for medicine from outside, from donors, from different people, and giving these medications to patients. I believe the future of advocacy must be empowering in that it will not only be about sourcing for medications, but it is going to be about empowering the families that are affected with knowledge and information. Empowering the community with knowledge on how the spread of sickle cell disease can be avoided or can be reduced. I believe the future of advocacy has to be about empowering patients that are affected with sickle cell disease empowering them with skills that will enable them to become productive members of society. I believe there is a greatness hidden in each and every sickle cell patient. And with great care, motivation, and knowledge, sickle cell patients can rise to become doctors, teachers, engineers, or CEOs of their own companies. I believe the future of advocacy in the sickle cell space is about empowering health institutions with equipments that will enable them to test for genotypes in different places. Not only that, I believe it is about empowering 
health institutions with specialists that are specialized in dealing with sickle cell disease. So many people have been misdiagnosed in many ways and have suffered different uh, complications of sickle cell disease because there was no specialist that could attend to them. Lastly, I believe the future of advocacy in the sickle cell space has to be holistic. If the paradigm shift has taught us anything, it is that there is a holistic way of treating disease or conditions, and that is treating the physical as well as the mental. Mental illness is real, and perhaps the hardest part of dealing with sickle cell disease is mental. It is not knowing what your life will turn out to be like. It is not knowing what people see in you. It is calling in sick every other week at work and showing up to face your co-workers and explain to them that you are sick. It is showing up in places and having to struggle to convince people that you are sick, you are in pain. To convince caregivers that you are actually in pain and just not pretending to be in pain. The biggest part of dealing with sickle cell disease is mental. And I believe the future of, sickle, of advocacy in the sickle cell space will include institutions or facilities where patients with sickle cell disease can be advised to talk to a specialist so that they do not live their own lives anxious and depressed because of their condition. If we do not act, the future of sickle cell is uncertain. If we do not act, the future of patients that have sickle cell is too uncertain. But if we act, if we combine our efforts, if communities look for, look to take care of their people, if families take care of their children, if doctors take care of their patients, and the government takes care of its people, I believe the future of sickle cell advocacy is positive. Allow me to end with the words of Frederick Douglass. It is hard to raise strong men. It is hard to repair men that are broken than it is to raise children into strong men. As patients, sickle cell patients who are grown up, or who are grown ups, have been subjected to way too many trials and errors and cannot be repaired. But I believe together we can raise a generation of sickle cell patients that are going to grow up mentally strong, physically strong, and patients that are going to make a difference in society. And I believe this narrative changes with you and me. Today you and I stand in a space where we have this information. And how we act on this information is what is going to help to change this narrative. It starts with you knowing your genotype. It starts with you ending the stigma. And it starts with you to take care, taking care of your neighbor, your friend, your relative that has sickle cell disease. Thank you very much. Hey, hey.